If there's one dish that unites Greece with the rest of the world, it's definitely spanakopita. It's crossed all ethnic boundaries. We find it on menus all over the planet, and it's used in all sorts of different dishes, from pies to omelets to baked potatoes. And that's what I'm making today, a spanakopita baked potato. Let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is start on the onions with a little bit of extra virgin Greek olive oil, the start of most good things in the Greek kitchen, some chopped red onions, We just want to soften the onion a little bit. It takes a few minutes. You want that nice translucent sheen. And I'm going to get the spinach in here in batches. I'm using fresh spinach, coarsely chopped. This will cook down a little bit of salt. The basic spanakopita filling can take anything in the onion family, basically. Red onion, white onion. You can put leeks in here if you want, or scallions. It's an extremely versatile filling. A little more spinach. This dish makes a great starter. Everyone loves a good baked potato recipe, so this kind of falls into that general category. Let's get the rest of the spinach in here. This is just gonna take a few minutes. We want the spinach to be nice and wilted. It's gonna to continue to cook inside the baked potato once this all comes together and goes into the oven. The spinach is wilted exactly where we want it to be and there's not any liquid left in the pan, it's all cooked off. I'm gonna let the spinach cool down a little bit and get to the potatoes. I've already boiled the potatoes for about 20 minutes. You want them to be soft enough so you can scoop out the pulp. Cut them in half. What I like to do, I like to just do it with a, a teaspoon. Be careful not to tear the skin. And we just wanna get the potato flesh. And you just wanna make a cavity and that's what we're gonna fill. It's almost time to fill these beautiful potatoes. I'm just getting some olive oil in the baking pan. And let me just get these in. They fit nice and snugly. The spinach is cool. Whatever flesh came out of those cooked potatoes is going into the filling. Just mash it with a fork. Just a touch of olive oil to soften this up. Time to add the cheeses. So I have a little bit of Greek feta. That is a classic ingredient in most spanakopita fillings. I have anthotiro, which is a soft whey cheese, very much like ricotta. So you could actually use ricotta if you want. Some Greek yogurt. Extra creamy texture in the filling. And it adds a nice tart touch to this as well. And finally, a little fresh dill. It adds that nice, almost spring-like flavor to this. I'm just gonna whisk the eggs. We want our filling to be nice and fluffy, but the eggs also will hold all of this together. Just a light whisk on that. This is going in here next. And we're gonna mix all of this together. I think you're getting the picture here. This is a pretty rich rendition of a spanakopita filling, and it's got an extra layer of flavor 
with that, the tartness of the yogurt, the potato and the egg make it fairly substantial. Just a little touch of salt in the filling. And we're ready to fill the potato cavities with this super creamy spanakopita filling. You wanna just mound it. This is supposed to be over the top. This is not a lighthearted dish. This is a fun, rich rendition of spanakopita and baked potato together. These are almost ready to go into the oven. One last touch, a little bit of caseri cheese, which is a very mild sheep's milk cheese. One of the nicest Greek table cheeses. It's sweet, it's nutty, and it melts really beautifully. These are ready to go into the oven at 350 for about a half hour. These are definitely ready. The color is perfect. Oh, look at that. Beautiful sight. Can't wait to taste this version of Spanakopita. A little bit hot. It's a pretty good thing. I get a little of that cheese. Wow, this is a baked potato with a Greek passport. It tastes just like spanakopita, but instead of the flakiness of phyllo, I have the comfort of a beautiful baked potato, that earthiness that holds all of this beautiful filling together, and the feta and the spinach and the dill and the yogurt adds that beautiful tartness and creaminess. This is a great appetizer or starter. It's even a great snack. And this calls for a traditional Greek grape varietal that also travels the world very easily, Savatiano. It's from the region of Attica, right outside of Athens. It's got a nice light citrusy acidity and reminds me a little bit of a Pinot Grigio. So if you like that sort of wine, you'll like it very much. And it goes beautiful with Spanakopita filled baked potatoes, Greek passport all the way. Yamas.